a match is always more complicated than just serve and return, but definitely this part of the game played a very important role. We could see in the first set that Novak was really struggling to, to return Kyrgios' serve. Once he got into the match, he started to read much better the serves. He started to also anticipate a lot, like choosing a side. And most of the service games of Nick were more difficult than in the first set. So he had to fight to win his service games, and that was also one of the keys. The ability to return of Novak was very important because then the key of the match became the rallies. At the start of the match, it was not about rallying because it was only about serving. If it would have stayed like that, for sure, Nick would have won. But as we know, uh, Novak is probably the best returner in the world and maybe of all times. <laughs> when the opponent is serving, if you, if you fix your eyes only on Novak, you will see that his split step is never going forward, but is going forward and on a side every time, which means that he anticipates the serves of the opponent. Does he bet or does he go where he thinks the serve is going to go? For sure, it's a second option. Otherwise, Nick maybe would have scored many more aces. Actually, he scored a lot, but probably many more. And we could see that he was returning quite often. So that was really a key. Then after that, once the return, once the ball is in play, then it's a matter of rallying. And in the rally, I believe that Novak is superior to Nick, and that's why it ended up being a win from Novak. During this Wimbledon final between Novak and Nick, it was not only about serve and return. It was about it, but a tennis match is always much more complicated than that. Before the match, I explained that there were a few keys that were very important. So serve and return, for sure. The second key would be the length of the rallies and the ability of Nick to shorten them. That was extremely important. Because the more Novak would hit, the more confident he would get. In a match with so much on the line, so so much emotion, when a player is able to create a constant uncertainty, it's extremely stressful for the opponent who starts to make many more mistakes. Definitely, that's one of the biggest assets of Nick to be able to create that uncertainty. And I believe that in that final, he accepted to rally much too much. He accepted to go into long rallies, to play soft, to wait for the right ball to go, which makes sense in general. But against Novak in a Grand Slam final, I would think that he would take many more risks, create much more uncertainty, go return volley much more. Actually, we saw that uh, Novak hit quite many double faults in important moments because he was scared about Nick going uh, return and volley. So I thought he would do it much more. Uh, many more drop shots coming to the net, taking more risk, hitting the ball much harder. And every time he was hitting harder, Novak was kind of trying to put the ball back. Only when he was playing at a normal pace, Novak was able to move the ball around and make him work. We also know that Nick's fitness is not at the highest level because we know that he's not practicing as much as the other guys and he's kind of playing half time <laughs> he didn't play the full he doesn't play the full schedule so definitely that's important for him not to accept to go into long rallies and get uh, get a bit less of his capital in terms of fitness he needs the full fitness capital because he needs to be explosive so shortening the rallies is a key for him and for me in that match there were too many much too many long rallies because he accepted to play too soft first of all i, I want to say that i feel that uh, in that first set Novak was like a boxer in the first round of a match. He was looking at his opponent, checking where he serves, where he goes on the big points, how he plays. And then once he lost the first set, he was ready for what's coming next. There were really two matches in one. Second, for sure, the experience of Novak played a very important role. And uh, I would say experience because he never panicked. And we see that this year and last year, a lot of very important matches, he started being behind. We saw it in the final of Rangaros last year against uh, Stefanos. He was also two sets down against Musetti in that uh, Rangaros that he won against uh, Stefanos last year. He was two sets down this year also against Sinner. Um, and he was one set down in that final, never panicked. He was one set down also in semi-final, by the way, <laughs> against Nori. Same here, same in that final, one set down. He doesn't panic. Now It's like, okay, now I have the full image of how you play, what you're going to do, and now I'm ready to compete. Well, so that's what happened. Refusal to lose, for sure, is probably, if not the best, one of the best with Rafa in the world. 
his ability to turn matches around, to find solutions, to reset when it's important. This played a big role. Also his solidity with a match with so much on the line, so much stress, so much, so much importance because before the match, I explained that if he, doesn't, he didn't win that Wimbledon, he would have won zero Grand Slam this year and kind of let Rafa take a lot of advance in that race to become the greatest. So, so much on the line. To be able to be that solid is extremely important. And we could see that he was so accurate, playing close to the line, playing deep, preventing Nick from attacking him because he was able to play deep and move him a lot or play deep center to avoid giving him angle. All that, the, the, I would say that the fact that Novak is super solid, his tactical knowledge and understanding to, again, avoid putting Nick in the situation in which he was dangerous. Uh, when I say, talk about tactical, also the way he served. He served mostly on Nick's forehand the whole match because he knew that on the back end the ball will go back all the time and he's going to get many more uh, free points serving the forehand. He was also serving the slice, opening the court a lot on the deuce side. So his technical, tactical uh, knowledge played a, played a big role in that match. And I know he prepared the match extremely well. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. He needed to feel it. And that's why it took him one set to feel what he needed to do. I don't think that when Nick is vocal, it's a problem. I think the opposite. I think that everybody's different. Uh, what is true for some is not true for others. And if you look at the greatest match that Nick played in this Wimbledon, it was against Stefanos. He was vocal at every single point from the first one to the last one. So I think it's his way also to get his energy, to get his will, to get his uh, aggressiveness that he needs to play. And when he's too silent, he, he's not that uh, aggressive uh, in the game, I mean, and he's not playing his best. And uh, I think he's much more vulnerable when he's on the, in the matches, it's quiet when there is no problem. And in a way, he creates problems because he needs them to take the best out of him. So it, a lot of people think it's annoying, and I understand. I'm not saying it's good or not good. I'm saying it's good for him, and he needs it. And that's why he creates problems a lot. And when you see how he acts, sometimes a little problem becomes big with him. He makes it much bigger. And he keeps repeating the same problem for one set or more until another one comes and then he can rely on the second one. And to, to add to that, when he played against Stefanos and he thought Stefanos should have been defaulted because he threw the ball in the crowd, he spoke about it almost the whole match and he probably played the best he's ever played. And the next morning I was in the locker room and Nick was still talking about it with another chair umpire or whatever, shouting and still into it. He needs it. He needs it. It brings the fire in himself that he needs to play his best. So I don't think that was a problem in that match. The problem in that match that Nick had to go through was the loss of concentration, the loss of focus. He got broken two times when he was 40-15 and 40-love because as he was leading in the game and serving great, he just lost focus, then, then deuce, and then uh, he was again in danger. So it's more the, 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 this element, the fact that he's struggling to keep the focus every point that is a problem then the fact that he gets angry at people, which actually brings his focus back a lot. He has a lot in common with John McEnroe in this. When he's 40 love up, he's, there is zero fire in him. He's calm. That's where he loses the points and comes back to deuce. And when he gets broken, then he gets angry. And then he's playing good. But again, when he's able to create a problem with the opponent, like what he did very well with Stefanos, that's where he plays the best. Maybe it's something that people don't like and I can understand. People think it's fun. That's how he gets the best out of him. And a few matches in this Wimbledon when he was quiet playing opponent that he had nothing against, I was thinking, oof, danger. And actually, that's the matches he was the closest to lose. I think Nick is, uh, is still a bit far from winning a Grand Slam. Uh, of course, he's closer than ever. That's uh, an evidence. Uh, he's played the best Grand Slam ever in Wimbledon, but uh, it's another thing to win one. Let's not forget that uh, he didn't have to play uh, Rafa in semis. It would have been a, a different challenge to beat Rafa and Novak in a row to win a Grand Slam. And in today's world, except the fact that Novak is not um, able to play several Grand Slams because of the, the fact that he refuses to be vaccinated, but otherwise you have to beat those two guys plus a few other good ones. Maybe uh, an Alcaraz, a Tsitsipas, a Zverev or a Medvedev, plus 
maybe Rafa and Novak. This is what you have to do today to win a Grand Slam. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve the final, he was in final, but this is the challenge. And to be able to succeed in this challenge, you have to be very fit and very consistent mentally and physically throughout those two weeks. He's much better than before. He's still not, I mean, he's still not as consistent and as focused for two weeks against those guys as others. So he's on the way, but there is still, uh, I think, a way to go if he wants to win a Grand Slam. If you enjoyed my video and want to stay on top of what's happening in the tennis world, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you guys very soon.